you're watching Fringineering Labs, and I'm your host, Nick Poole. Now, I thought it was too early in the year to do a Valentine's Day episode, but um, I also thought it was too early in the year to buy these chalky, sugary heart candies, and yet, here we are. So, um, today we're going to talk about hearts. So we're not going to talk about hearts exactly, but we're going to talk about heart rate and how you can measure your heart rate using this simple pulse sensor. This is an open source pulse sensor that's recently been released by a couple guys called Joel Murphy and Yuri Gitman. And they've come up with a very simple design for a pulse sensor that can interface with controllers like Arduino and give you a very simple readout uh, that you can use to calculate your pulse in beats per minute. So heart rate data is really interesting data and you can incorporate it into all sorts of projects. This pulse sensor is available at www.pulsesensor.com. Conveniently enough. So let's see what's in the bag. So this is the sensor itself. We've also got an earlobe clip. There are two places you can take this type of pulse reading from. Uh, at least two places that are easy to do it, and that's on the earlobe and on the fingertip. Um, I can't use it because I don't have any real estate left on my earlobes. There's also a little Velcro band, which is used to stick the sensor to the end of your finger like this, um, and then a couple of Velcro dots, and you just take one of those and stick it to the side of the sensor that doesn't touch your finger, and then you can attach it to the Velcro band and that whole uh, rig there can just go on your finger and uh, you're ready to measure your pulse. I had already opened this kit, but it also comes with a couple of clear stickers, and I have one stuck on the front of my sensor to basically keep gunk from your fingers from screwing up the uh, LED or the light sensor that are on the board here. So you're probably wondering what LEDs and light sensors have to do with measuring a pulse rate. Well, it all comes down to a method called reflectance photoplethysmography. Now, it turns out that blood reflects and absorbs a certain amount of light. So if you actually shine a light into a body tissue and then measure the amount of light that's reflected back out, you can find out how much has been absorbed by blood. Now, if you take that amount of absorption and you graph it over time, you end up with a waveform. And that waveform represents the pulsatile changes in arterial blood in that tissue. And those changes in arterial blood volume obviously correspond to your heart rate. Now, there's a lot more information in this than just your heart rate. It actually gives you the waveform of your heartbeat. And all that information is gleaned from a little bit of light that's reflected back out of your body tissue. That's crazy. As you can imagine, those differences in the reflected light can be difficult to measure because they're so minute. So one thing that they've done on this board is they've also added an amplifier, and that amplifies the signal that's coming out of the light sensor. When you hook this up to your microcontroller, you're just going to give it power and ground, which will power the amplifier and also the LED. And then the output of the amplifier goes to an ADC on your microcontroller. And that way you can convert your analog signal into a digital signal and then record those and map them over time to find your heart rate. So I'm going to strap this thing to my finger and hook it to an Arduino and run some of the example code that they include on their website. So here you can see that I've plugged in the pulse sensor and the light is on. This has got a green light. And I'm just going to attach it to the Velcro band here. Like that. And then I'll put it on my uh, index finger on my left hand since I'm right-handed. It doesn't matter where, where, which finger you put it on, but uh, I'm just choosing a finger that I'm not going to have to click a mouse with. Let's go ahead and load up the example code on our Arduino and uh, bring up the processing sketch that goes with it, and we'll be able to actually map my pulse rate. So this is the pulse sensor example code that actually runs on your microcontroller. You can see they've got some variables at the top that you can uh, switch around the blink pin and the pulse pin and things uh, to make sure that it's compatible with your hardware. And then down here, there are some volatiles that hold uh, 
a bunch of different values that they generate throughout the sketch. So beats per minute, um, incoming raw data from the sensor. Uh, this is the interbeat interval. And then um, also there are things like uh, pulse and then uh, whether or not there's a beat um, from the sensor. So then they do some basic setup and then there's um, some calls to this process called send data to processing, which basically serial prints um, all of this information that they're collecting to the uh, serial port, which is being monitored by the processing sketch. <clears throat> also connected to the Arduino sketch is an interrupt routine that runs every time that the Arduino finds a beat. And this is where they do all the fancy stuff like count how many beats per minute, uh, time the IBI, things like that. And they run all of that information over the serial line over to their processing sketch. Take a look at the processing sketch. It's pretty straightforward. They draw a window, they pull in all of the information from serial, and then they draw a pulse waveform. They also have a beating heart, um, the IBI waveform. So they've got a couple different things going on here. Um, it's basically just displaying the information that comes from the Arduino. All of the data processing really happens on the Arduino itself. So let's go ahead and open the processing window and see what's going on here. So this sensor is actually connected to my fingertip right now, and you can see um, it's reading a heart rate at 93 beats per minute, 94, and climbing. <laughs> All right, as I talk about it, it's just going to keep climbing, isn't it? If you look down here at the IBI, you can see the interbeat interval, and you can tell sort of the change in heart rate over time. Um, and then over here is the actual waveform of the heart rate. Now this can be screwed up if you're um, moving the sensor around and stuff. Right now my hand is like perfectly still. So all of these climbs and drops in heart rate are um, <laughs> troubling but not for the sensor. So uh, I'm actually gonna move the sensor around now and you'll be able to see what's happening there. Um, so here I'm just kind of pinching the sensor against my finger and there you can see if it's too tight bl uh, blood can't pool in the tissue and it doesn't allow a good reading to get through. Um, if the sensor is too loose you see you get these peaks and the whole thing is sort of um, uh, and the whole thing is just you see these peaks come up too high and then they clip and I think what's happening here, yeah, see it's approaching 200 beats. It's probably actually around 80 beats. And what's happening is that the, uh, the smaller peaks that you're seeing in each beat are probably being registered as individual beats because the signal is so huge and it's clipping so much. And you can actually tell that that's the case by looking at the IBI here, which is phenomenal. That it's actually registering twice as many beats as there are. So. I'll push this pulse sensor onto my finger a little more. You'll see it'll sort of normalize here. And you should see that those smaller peaks are significantly smaller. And there, the IBI is back into a normal range. And you can see my beats per minute around 97, 96, which is probably about right. So all in all, this is a pretty cool little device. And it is that easy to measure your pulse rate. You can use this kind of data for all kinds of stuff. I think my next project is going to be to integrate this with some LilyPad e-textile development boards and make some sort of wristband that will measure my heart rate and log it over the course of a day or two. Um, if I get around to doing that, I'll do a video and I'll show you what data I collected and what I can pull out of that. Anyway, check back soon for a new episode of Fringe Engineering Labs. And until then, happy hacking. There's a couple of Velcro dots here, um, which are you, okay. Stick the finger, stick the finger. Too hot. Hey you, that's not particularly 
romantic, is it? I am sure. Okay. Don't tell. Well, that's mildly creepy. LOL. Oh, someone has the internet. Get real. Get real? Which is kind of mean. Still tastes alright. 